The strike by the Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria is exactly two months old today. That's two months without lawyers going to courts, which in turn translates to a loss of brief and loss of money. And what's worse is that the judicial workers are threatening to take their strike to another level. That's because the state governors are ensuring seriousness about meeting their demand for financial autonomy. A senior advocate of Nigeria and former chairman of the NBA section of the Public Interest and Development Law, Mr. Paul Ananaba, is joining us to talk about this. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like you to first share your personal experience with how this whole strike is affecting you and your work, and then generally in the, in the country. Well, um, it's been a rare experience. I uh, uh, started practicing law uh, as early as 1991. Uh, we've not gone through this before, where a uh, strike paralyzed the courts continuously for two months. Total paralysis, not even um, partial ones we used to see. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been hectic. And then you, you ask me how it has affected me. I am used to going to court virtually every morning. And I wake up every morning. I don't even, there's no court to go to. Uh, it's, it's as if I, you know, I, ju I just got retired pr prematurely. Wow. Oh, no court to go to. This is what I've been doing since um, uh, more than 30 years now. Now, when you go forward to that, you cannot even compare it with the COVID period. Hmm. During the COVID period, it wasn't that uh, hectic. Uh, we had Zoom court sessions and all that. And all that. So it's, it's a bit di it's different from that. That even was COVID and everybody was feeling it. Now, uh, uh, you, you now get to the office, you, you don't have much to do because, I mean, there are no, no processes to file um, except people who have backlogs, which I didn't have. So you get to the office, maybe to read and all that. So it's, it's a difficult experience. The next level is that I, have, I had to pay salaries for March across my, the four offices I have across the country, I'll pay salaries, March. I pay salaries for April. And I pay salaries for May. And we're already in June, going to second, third day. Uh, it doesn't seem as if this strike will be called off this week again. So it builds a lot of anxiety. Yeah. Am I... As an employer of level two, am I going to lay off some work lawyers? I, I'm just using myself to mirror what will be going on with other lawyers. Yeah. Are we going to pay part salaries or are salaries going to be delayed? What about the other overheads? Did they stop with the strike? They did not. Now, what about the young lawyer who may have just started practice? and his practice is litigation, going to court. How will such person survive? Uh, how will the person get income? And then you look at the, um, the, the litigant, the litigant, the client. What will such a person do? He has an issue that needs the attention of the court. How will this person get that attention? And much more, those who are in detention, those who are in detention that require bail or processing of their bail have gotten an unknown sentence, really, or what, as a matter of speaking, for two months because they can't be released. Simple bell. They are there for two months. And if you put that along with our experience coming from the COVID all the way to this point, 
it's been a it's been a difficult time for the legal profession. Mr. 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 Yeah, like, I want to, you know, know what it feels like. You know, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of urgency with, um, you know, regards sorting out the issues and, you know, putting the, the courts back in session, um, both from the government side and every other per, um, 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 uh, person who, of course, uh, should play a role here. Um, why isn't but, there but an urgency? Not, it doesn't appear so, and you can understand that there are... I've lost count of the number of strikes that are ongoing now. It's just that the Jusun strike is like a bear, but it affects the court directly now. Otherwise, Polytechnic, some medical parts of the medical profession are not. Many people are on strike. So we have gotten used to strike in Nigeria, perhaps, so that when there are strikes, nobody worries about it. Uh, it can go on. But this strike affects the fundamental rights of people. I just gave you an example of those in detention. It could be anybody. And this dog got, just got shot, bam. And the person is in detention for two months and counting. Have you wondered what states have lost from filing fees? Give us a sense from, of that, Ms. Ananaba. Yes. From filing fees, mm -hmm. from probate fees, a large chunk of revenue of many states come from probate fees. Come from the country. And don't, don't forget, the judges and the magistrates will be paid, whether they are strike or not, because the judges are not on strike. The magistrates are not on strike. The Minister of Justice is not on strike. So even this Justin staff, we, will, we also have to be paid. So at the end of the day, we, we, we seem to have lost the urgency of fixing this, lost the relevance of this. If you are an investor, will you consider Nigeria a, a, a destination to invest? where the cost can be locked up for two months and nobody cares, no urgency. And look at the level of insecurity today. Why should one worry about, or not worry about insecurity? Because if anybody has any concern, there is no call to go to. Perhaps the police now, police stations, will be too busy. They will do what the police normally does, and there will also be some form of courts because that's the only place to run to now. You can't go to the military. So yeah. I, I, I just can't fix what's go, going on in our country. Thank you. Okay, so Ms. Ananamba, you mentioned young lawyers earlier, and news reports reaching us confirms that some young lawyers, you know, just so they can find a means to survive, they have registered their vehicles for e-hailing, you know, services, and they're now doing that to survive. These are people who should be, you know, making sure that justice is dispensed in their own way. Um, how do you interpret this, this situation? That's what I'm, those are desperate situations, but our, our, our rules of professional conduct will not allow that. They can only do that quietly. Although people will present arguments when we get to thought that, that uh, river will cross it. But uh, how, you, you can understand, a, a young lawyer, where will he get income? The courts are not on. The clients will avoid you. The economy is not even uh, buoyant that any client will be, or family member will be benevolent. The economic courts has caught the benevolence of many people. So what will you do? And you know the society looks at the lawyer as a rich man, young or old. So what will the young lawyer do? Perhaps that's what out of those desperate situations, some will be doing that. But the profession does not encourage that. What I'm going to say is that it is important and it is a national duty that both Jusun and the government should bring this strike to an end.
Okay. As we speak, we're already in June. By the middle of July, uh, July to the end of July, statutorily, there will be vacation for a month and a half or thereabout. And then we, this thing continues till September. It's painful. The future is really difficult. What, what would you um, be saying to Jusun um, now? And what is the message to Jusun um, seeing that the federal My government... My message to Jusun is yeah. most of this, some of these people in Jusun are also lawyers. A large percentage of them are lawyers. I, I, the public maybe sees them as just a small staff. No. Many of them are lawyers too. And that's why the strike is effective because they know what they are, they are talking about. What I think Justin should do, we, we should not have this type of strike again. All the issues should be on the table and resolved. And much more to the government. They should ensure that this issue is dealt with holistically, uh, patriotically, and thoroughly, so that we don't go back to the strike. It's, I wouldn't subscribe to the situation of uh, call out the strike now, uh, go back again. Because this strike has hurt this country, has hurt everybody. Thank you. So what would you say to governors like um, um, ES and Wiki of River States that have threatened to not pay judiciary workers who refuse to show up at work? Well, uh, um, His Excellency Yudson Wike is a lawyer himself. Um, I'll be surprised if that's what he will do. I'm not talking about what he said. If that's what he would do. Uh, where has he been then in the last two months? Is this strike just beginning? So let's not talk about that. I believe that the bar will reach him and um, sort that aspect out. But um, we, I will be thinking that every governor should be talking to another governor so that they can, um, this, um, the, the peace process will not be derailed. You cannot get uh, this matter resolved by force. Hmm. You cannot resolve it by threats. You cannot resolve it by uh, harassment, it should be resolved on the table All right. so are, that it will be lasting. Are, are there any um, legal practitioners at all that are still making money somehow, some way in this period? Um, yes. Aside being there in court. Be, there are those that I hear and people say are commercial lawyers who draft documents, give advice. Maybe they get some, you know, uh, those on uh, who do property business, like I hear. I'm a litigation person. Uh, you know, if there's any other thing I, I do that by this way. And um, I, I, so I feel the pinch of the strike. Mm. I, uh, the professional angle and the business angle. You know, for me, law is not just a profession. It's also a business. That's where I feed from. Okay, and um, um, can, can we have a, you know, a sense of what it feels like uh, to be awaiting bail for two months? Um, and of course, um, not having any idea when you will be able to you know, go to court for your bail application once again. That, that's um, the point I was making. It's a, yeah. a breach of fundamental. It is mental torture. Mental torture. Remember that some of these people may, may, may be there just for flimsy charges. You know, except that to some extent, the Supreme Court and Court of Appeal delivered some judgments. Some judgments have become stale and they are constitutionally guaranteed issues. For example, a court must deliver judgment within 90 days. So, matters where there have been final addresses in the high court. Those judgments, those cases are, are, have been cut off by the constitution. And uh, well, we will look to see how those issues will be resolved in the coming days because, I mean, uh, 
in the, the in the past you will um, the judge will address I invite the parties to address present pressure address. But the superior courts have also ruled that no the constitution does not provide for that. So those cases may become stale. Some of them, even in the Court of Appeal and Supreme Court, I do not know. But once any of those judgments are gone beyond 90 days, they are in difficulty. So there are collateral effects of this strike. So all the parties, I plead with them to come to terms quickly. Okay, how about the Nigeria Bar Association? We know that um, they were mute the first few um, days of the strike because, you know, the, the president said they didn't want to rush into any, any action. But later on, we saw the NBA begin to express their support and even also protest, you know, supporting Juicin. But what, what are they saying right now regarding conversing with other stakeholders and making sure the strike comes to an end? My understanding of what MBA has done is to be mediatory. We are not taking sides as MBA. MBA has been mediatory. Now, the cons we and we de we defend the constitution as a, as an association. You may have to take a look at section one twenty and one twenty one of the constitution. That's what Jusel is asking for. Section one twenty one says that. The, the, the sums uh, that are due to the, legis to the judiciary should be paid directly to the judiciary. So anybody that is not doing that is breaching the Constitution. And you, you, you would have seen that in the recent times that the judiciary has been so politicized because of this issue of autonomy and independence. Why will why will a Nigerian not be working towards the autonomy and independence of the judiciary? Why wouldn't you pay these monies to the judiciary? Why will we have a case where a governor comes and says, "I bought vehicles for the judiciary for the judges"? Why? Why would you have happened to run the analysis? How did judges arrive in vehicles for the So that's not what it should be. I don't want political. We buy vehicles and go out of the vehicles for them and do this after. How will they be neutral? How do we do this? Okay, Mr. Ananaba. We're, we're losing you. We're losing you a bit with your audio. Could you kindly come again? Since since we we have you now. Okay, there's still a bit of a, a hitch with that network. But what he was basically saying is that, you know, according to the constitution, the money that should be for judicial workers should get to them directly. And he was basically condemning governors buying cars for judicial workers, that it takes away their, their impartiality and neutrality. Absolutely. And that's, that's what, you know, the autonomy is all about. You can't, um, you know, claim to be, um, you know, um, autonomous and you're still collecting money from, you know, a person who you should, you know, at some point be able to give judgment against or yes. for. Um, so that, that's, you know, really where the challenge is. You know, the, the um, legal system needs to be able to fund itself somehow, yes. some way. Um, uh, government needs to hands off, you know, with regards to their finances. And it goes, you know, I think here we've spoken lots of times about the local government also and its, its full autonomy. So it's, it's, it's in many other sectors. But the victims here, obviously, are these lawyers, like he's mentioned, he's continued to pay salaries in his four offices um, without any, you know, income. Uh, at the same time, there's people who are languishing in jail, waiting for bail. Uh, Mr. Ananaba, uh, can you hear us now? Uh, can you hear us, Mr. Ananaba? Uh, yes, we can. There's a little uh, glitch with the... No, okay. We're still struggling to get uh, clear feedback from you. But I think we can, we can wrap up the conversation here. I would like to say thank you. Uh, we hope that there is some answers uh, provided by Justin and the federal government as quickly as possible and that uh, the courts can be back fully uh, functional and get you know the, uh, things moving once again. Uh, thanks for your time this morning and thanks for speaking with us. Thank you too.
Right. Okay, so you know when we look at how judici judiciary works in other parts of the country. Okay, you take for example in South Africa, and how Jacob Zuma is standing trial for all the corruption allegations against him. You can obviously see that it's only in a country where the judiciary is autonomous that that can happen. It's only in a country where there is no, you know interference, political interference whatsoever, that the lawyers and judges of a country can call the, president, the former president to order and say, you are accused of collecting bribes and so, so millions. You need to answer for that. A country where these judges receive cars from you, receive gifts from you, they can never you know, dispense justice that way. He's, he's and to also be able to properly fund the legal system, to be able to fund their courts, to be able to fund, you know, everything that has to do with running the court system. You know, it cannot be, you know, uh, because we're waiting for, for kickbacks or for, or for funding from the government. Mm -hmm. um, we also have our own, you know, um, glitches where things need to be fixed, you know, like who appoints the CJN? Who appoints, um, or who get, how does the CGN get into office? Yes. How does um, the Attorney General get into office and Minister of Justice get into office? You know, some of all those things. We've seen, you know, uh, Abu Bakr Malami uh, all through the period that we've been in the last four, five, uh, six years, um, always taking sides with President Muhammad Buhari, um, which in, in, in other second, you know, other climes, you know, might not seem normal. Um, even at times when he should be able to take a stance and say, no, you know, this doesn't seem right. But there's always, he has always continued to take sides, a political side, seemingly political yes. side, instead of you know, um, you know, acting as a, um, a minister of justice and attorney general of the federation. So um, we have our own peculiarities, you know, with the issues concerning our legal system. But my own challenge really is why this doesn't seem to have any urgency with fixing. Um, why doesn't anyone see that this is totally abnormal? That your courts have not been in session for two months? That is that is entirely abnormal. Um, and like um, Paul Ananaba said, it's uh, an infringement on the rights of those people who have been denied bail for the last two months because there's no court to go to. Um, but will they also get justice at the end of all of this? Who can they sue um, at the end of all of this? So um, it's a mess. But these are some of the factors and some of the aspects that we need fixing with regards to Nigeria. And it will not come by uh, being called uh, uranium and your know, United Af uh, African Republic Uraria. or whatever. You are uranium. <laughs> Let's uh, take a break here. We'll return to speak to a former uh, presidential aspirant. And he's also indicated interest in running for president in 2023 in the person of Mr. Kingsley Mogulu. We'll be right back.